What's up guys, welcome to the AI Timeline episode 10. To be honest, I am completely overwhelmed because there was a lot of crazy AI news that happened in the past week, so let's dive into it. In today's headline, an AI research that is capable of generating a complete South Park episode has been published, showing us the capability to generate episodes infinitely with just a single text prompt. When I said everything about the episode is AI generated, literally everything is AI generated. The background art and the character Characters are generated by diffusion-based text-to-image models, the voices are synthesized by AI, probably Tortoise, the plot and the scene of the episode is fully generated by GPT-4 with a prompt chain. It's kind of jaw-dropping that a fully AI-generated TV show of this quality is already here, sitting right here in front of my eyes. Let me just quickly show you what it looks like. Screw you, Kyle! You're just jealous because you don't understand the true power of AI! We're almost done with the programming for the AI robot pig. Imagine the endless possibilities for entertainment. All the characters, movement, mouth movement, voices, dialogues, and even deep fake characters are all AI generated, like the Elon Musk character right here. So the idea is to preserve humanity's cultural heritage by sending our most important actors off to my Mars base. It is basically a simulation with around the same idea as the AI Spongebob that went viral on YouTube where the characters can interact with each other based on the given topic and then a story can be generated from that. These are all official demos by the way, this program is not available for anyone. I can definitely hear Disney drooling over this technology right now, visual entertainment is going to be changed completely in these coming years, or probably in the coming months. Onto the next headline, Meta has dropped yet another bombshell that will probably reshape the landscape of open source language models. Yes, Llama 2 has been officially released with zero warning. There are currently three different sizes ranging from 7B, 13B to 70 billion parameters. They are all trained on 2 trillion tokens and has a context length of 4096 tokens. Compared to other existing models, Llama 270B easily outperforms all other models. It did worse than Llama 1 on Bull Q though, which is pretty funny, but the smaller models are pretty good too. For Llama 213B, it has the performance of MBT30B and Falcon 40B, so basically half the size with a slightly decreased performance. For Llama 7B, it has way higher performance than other 7B models like MBT and Falcon. It is it's also worth noting that its Q&A ability has been improved on the Llama 7B model. Additionally, they have a RLHF model called Llama 2 Chat, which is the safer and more helpful model to prevent Llama 2 from saying dumb stuff. But I think they made it too safe here, which is kind of hilarious. Like, they cannot explain to you how to make mayonnaise because it is a trademark product by Hellman's company, or how mayonnaise recipe is not a safe or ethical topic to provide as it involves the use of eggs, which can be a food allergen. What is also surprising was that it is available for commercial use. That completely changes the entire AI language model landscape. People are saying that the open source release of Llama 2 for language models is literally on the same level as back when Stable Diffusion was first released for image generation. An incredibly powerful and raw model that anyone can pretty much do anything with. This open source commercial use available model would definitely disrupt the entire LLM startup market really hard and is definitely making the 1.2 billion Mosaic ML acquisition looks incredibly terrible right now. You can now download Llama 2 models by going to their project page, clicking on downloads, then filling out your name, email, organization, and accepting their license. You will then receive a personal custom link in your email which took like 30 seconds for me to receive it and you will need to use this URL to download their models with the instructions on the Llama 2 GitHub. The third headline of this week is definitely the research called Hyper Dream Booth. If the quality and the techniques are actually as good as the paper promises, this could reshape the current existing text-to-image landscape and make SD 1.5 or even SDXL even better. Dream Booth, Text Inversion, and LoRa have been the key developments in Stable Diffusion image generation. It is what enables people to train a custom model for a specific art style or a type of human portrait. However, they all have a few downsides. It takes pretty long to train them. So Hyper Dream Booth is here to change our lives. It is 25 times faster than Dream Booth, 125 times faster than Textual Inversion, and to top it all, it needs as little as one reference image to generate results that look this good. 
good. How they have done this is by using a hyper network to generate an initial prediction of a subset of network weights that are then refined using fast fine tuning for high fidelity to subject detail. Using a single reference and comparing to other existing methods, Hyper Dream Booth definitely outclassed them all. If the codes are ever going to be released, I would definitely try out multiple references to see how well it can outperform others in terms of subject consistency and see if they can actually replace Dream Booth or not. And yeah, that was a crazy start for the last week. One AI tech that can change the entire entertainment industry and two AI techs that can potentially change their respective fields. But there's a lot more. We are not slowing down today. I have already told you about the new Llama 2 model, but Meta also released yet another research and more specifically, a multimodal language model. It's called Chameleon and what's novel about this is that it is a foundation model that does text to image and image to text generation both ways. With this, it is capable of doing a lot of things like the basic text to image function, text guided image editing, image content Q&A, structure guided image editing like segmentation to image and object to image. It can also perform super resolution by adding a super resolution stage in the image generation. They didn't mention any plans to release this model, so testing it out might be impossible. There were some criticisms about this too. Gorn stated in the comments that the results look pretty bad and a lot of things look very artificial, which make this research look like something from years ago. Yet Meta claims that this is state of the art beating party, which is the AI research that is placed first on the MS Coco benchmark caught him in disbelief. For contrast, the 2022 stable diffusion model is in the 36th place and Dolly 2 is in the 27th place on the MS Coco benchmark. Next, we have Claude 2, the only available LLM that has a context length of 100k tokens. I went over that last episode but only recently realized that you can directly upload files onto Claude 2 and that is crazy. So with ChatGPT, if you wanted to read your PDF, you would need to use plug and for it to read codes, you will need to use Code Interpreter. However, you will need to pay to get access for both of the functions. But Claw 2 can basically combine both functions together and has a nice 100k token length compared to ChatGPT's lowly 8k tokens if you're using it online or 32k tokens if you're using their API. Claw 2 also lets you directly upload PDFs and compared to ChatGPT plugins where you need to upload the PDF to a third-party website, which sometimes doesn't really work, Claw 2 really outshines ChatGPT in this area. And right now, Claw 2 is completely free. Yes, free. The only few major downsides are that first, it's currently only available in the US and UK, but they are expanding soon. And second, Code Interpreter would still perform better at reading and generating codes because Code Interpreter has an instance for executing the codes itself, and I don't think Claw 2 has anything like that. Third, Claw 2 cannot upload any media like images or zip files. It is only limited to 5 10 megabytes files, which is definitely a lot less than ChatGPT, but probably because it's free. So yeah, Claw 2 also conveniently summarizes the next paper that I'm covering called Flash Attention 2. As transformers are the backbones of LLM, attention is the backbone of transformers. So faster attention would mean faster LLM. Flash Attention was released last year and is definitely incorporated in GPT-4 and other big language models. And now we have Flash Attention 2, a method 1.7 times to 3 times faster compared to its prior version. So basically the improvements allow training models with longer contexts for the same cost. For example, you can now train a 16k context model for the cost of an 8k context model from before, which is nuts. This research can be literally described like what this guy said. Bro is legit solo carrying the entire industry. He probably just saved the tens of millions with this single research for these mega corps just because he felt like it. Funnily, this flash attention to research perfectly challenged a new research that also came out this week. It's called Retentive Network. It is pretty much proposed as a successor for Transformers, which makes this situation now kind of awkward. Compared to Transformers, RetNet is able to use 3.4 times less GPU, have 8.4 times increase in throughput, and 15.6 times decrease in latency to GPU, with language model perplexity much lower as the model parameters increase. 
movies. So would Transformers with flash attention be better or faster or is retentive network still better? This is probably the question that is going to be looming around for a few weeks. On the higher level side of DLM research, copy is all you need is a paper proposed that instead of generating and predicting the next tokens, why don't we just copy and paste from existing text? It's kind of funny how the entire LLM community is trying to make language models to generate novel stuff and not memorize any text. Then there's this Chinese research that just barged in and be like, yo, if we just teach language models to copy and paste, isn't that more efficient? <laughs> It's it's actually more efficient, by the way, because it reduces the decoding steps to a series of copy and paste operations. I just don't know why this is so funny to me, and it apparently works really well, which is great. It is definitely a perfect fit for generating codes, medical terminologies, and law-related information. Next up, Google Bard has added an option where you can upload images for it to process. Multimodal image processing with Bard is actually pretty good. In this example by AI Breakfast, Bard can actually tell that this is not an egg, but a cat. It says that this is a photo of a white cat curled up on a gray bed sheet. It also automatically made the connection that it looks like an egg yolk on a fried egg, which is surprising. If you ever think your 24 GB VRAM is not enough, let me just tell you this guy ran a full 65 billion model on a bunch of Raspberry Pis. He ran it on his Pi cluster and loaded it across the cluster with round robin inference, which then is able to generate one token per 10 seconds. If you ask me what exactly he is explaining, I will have to tell you that I have no idea either. In the last piece of LLM news, is Apple finally going to improve Siri? There are sources saying that Apple is developing generative AI tools and an internal chatbot app called Apple GPT that is definitely going to be used on Siri. Siri is probably the most underwhelming chatbot right now, even MKBHD said so himself. So seeing Siri is going to be salvaged is a wonderful news. So yeah guys, get ready to gaslight Siri. That's all for this segment of LLM news, and here is the rest of the news, free for all, rapid fire. A few days ago, the NTAIR representative Carla Ortiz, Ben Brooks of Stability AI, Dana Rao of Adobe, and Jeffrey Harrelson of Universal Music Group came forward for a Senate hearing. In this hearing, Adobe's Dana Rao proposed to the Senate to make art styles copyrightable, which is absolute nuts. We believe artists should be protected against this type of economic harm, and we propose Congress establish a new federal anti-impersonation right that would give artists the right to enforce against someone intentionally attempting to impersonate their style or likeness. Furthermore, they propose another thing to the Senate called the C2PA, which is a new bill to control image authenticity. The stuff they have proposed here is pretty problematic and can ultimately destroy online data privacy. So I'll be talking about it more deeply in a separate video, so stay tuned. Next up, Kenden's C2.2 model has been released last week. It is a Russian model for text to image generation. What's special about this model is that it uses image embedding decoder over a pure text guided diffusion model. So the image embeddings only need to be generated in one single pass before all diffusion iterations. Kandinsky can generate at a resolution of 1024 times 1024, which is pretty high. The resulting image look extremely good too, and compared to its older versions, it is definitely a big step up. Next up, the extremely anticipated SDXL release has been delayed. Due to a few late bloomer models that actually performs better than they have expected, and they would basically need time to fix and adjust the models to the current existing SD ecosystem before publishing it so it wouldn't make redundant of what was already built up since SDXL 0.9 and SD 1.5. On the other hand, it seems like the result picking on their Discord server also helped to improve the models by quite a bit too. So go vote now guys! Some people have also reported that they can run SDXL on 4GB of VRAM. It's just that it takes around 60 seconds per generation which is pretty long. SDXL is also also now supported in the pre-release of Automatic 1111 version 1.5. It's also a release candidate so changes may be applied. Lastly, Elon Musk has talked about XAI in the Twitter space last week and what it'll be doing from now on. Their general goal is to build a good AGI with the purpose of understanding the universe. So the safest way he claims is to build an AGI that is maximum curious and truth curious. On top of that, Musk said there is a significant danger in training AI to be politically correct or training it not 
not to say what it thinks is true. So at XAI, they will let the AI say what it believes to be true, and Musk believes that it will result in some criticism. He also said that it's very dangerous to grow an AI and teach it to lie about what it doesn't know. So it'll definitely be pretty entertaining to watch how XAI grows, like what is happening with Twitter in the past few months. But before we end this video, here is the bonus segment of image and video processing result fest. Remember in the last episode, I was making the suggestion for the guy wearing a wig and converting himself into a girl that he should try out different hair colors? Funnily, before my video even uploaded, he posted what exactly I wanted him to try out with pure coincidence. I guess he or his audience also thought of the same thing. And yeah, by this result, you can definitely tell the regions around the hands are not separated cleanly. After a few days, he also posted an actual video of him being placed side by side with the generated video. I guess it's to prove to people that this full body image to image AI filter is legit. He said in the comments that he didn't use Epsynth and he used image to image for all the frames using stable diffusion, which took around two hours to make. Next up, here is a post about using SDXL to generate textures. So far, it looks incredibly promising to generate unique and repeated patterns with a strong hint of realism, like the patterns on the wooden planks and the stones. Remember Pika Labs from last episode? Some people has utilized it and made a Futurama as a real life cyberpunk movie by taking the results of presumably Midjourney and turning it into videos with Pika Labs. Lastly, this technique of using AI generative fills on movie scenes and impaint them vertically is able to convert them into a believable portrait aspect ratio. The effect is especially seamless when a movie scene or a camera shot barely moves, which is pretty sick. And let me segue into today's sponsor, Tensor.art. Tensor.art is an online image generator with probably the most customizations and models I've ever seen. On top of that, it supports SDXL 0.9 and its refiner, and contains a lot of fine-tuned models. For the image generations, you can add LoRa on top very easily, and you can choose from a large range of VAEs. It has the newest samplers, and it lets you clip skip. It also contains extensions such as ControlNet, High Res Fix, and even After Detailer. This is probably the most customizable online generator I have ever seen. Not only that, they also have a huge library of results and custom models for you to browse freely on their website, which is really nice if you want to find some inspiration. Right now, there's an activity on their website where you can win a 4090 GPU card or cash price of 1500 as a model uploader. What's even better is that they also have a Discord AI art competition four weeks in a row, where the winning team members will also get 1000 credits each, so definitely check out tensor.art now with the link down in the description. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelias, Chris Ledoux, Alex Shea, Alex Maurice, Deegan, Migilim, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.